to talk about now the ma second major feature of the diet to which the human beings are naturally adapted. And when I first started talking about this feature 20 years ago, people looked pretty blank. They'd never heard of this notion. But today it's almost become a commonplace. The human species is designed to work on a low glycemic diet. That is to say, it doesn't give sharp blood sugar spikes, abnormal blood sugar spikes. And today what we're doing is eating a diet which is the opposite, which is high glycemic, which gives these sharp blood sugar spikes. Why might this be a problem? Well, first of all, high blood sugar levels in the bloodstream create problems directly. They scar the arteries, they kill nerve endings, attack the kidney function. And anybody who's seen that film, Super Size Me by Morgan Spurlock, will know that when he lived for a month on McDonald's, he nearly died of fatty liver disease. That is what a high glycemic diet does to you. It gives you fatty liver. But more importantly than anything, cancers feed on blood sugar. So by having a high glycemic diet, you are feeding cancers. When the doctor wants to check out how your cancer is doing, he injects you with glucose. That's blood sugar. And the cancers light up like a Christmas tree on the x-rays. So right there, <clears throat> we have an enormous problem with the high glycemic diet, these high blood sugar levels. But worse than that is what the body has to do to control these dangerous high blood sugar levels. It has to secrete the hormone insulin to bring those blood sugar levels back down to normal. Now, insulin is a powerful hormone which has upsets, which can upset all kinds of other hormonal activities. So let's first of all just look at the hormonal, the insulin hormonal response to a typical modern diet. and the typical hormonal response to a forager type diet. And then the difference between the two is a state of hyperinsulinemia, abnormal insulin levels. These are levels to which the body isn't naturally adapted. It creates problems. I like to think of it like an iceberg. You can't see the problems, you don't feel the problems, they're underneath the surface. All you see above are the symptoms, various kinds of physical conditions, connected by the same thing, the hyperinsulinemia underneath. And so it is that the state of hyperinsulinemia is a major factor in a number of conditions. For example, very simply, postprandial slump. This is the condition where a couple of hours after having a high glycemic meal, you feel sleepy, you feel hungry, you would walk through a brick wall to get a Mars bar, and sometimes you get headaches and so on. And that in itself is generating a vicious cycle where you then compensate for low blood sugar levels, because that's what the insulin has done, it has overshot its target of bringing blood sugar levels down to normal, and you're now suffering uh, hypoglycemia, not enough blood sugar. So that's one of the problems. It's a minor problem, really, compared to some of the other ones that are coming along. <clears throat> but hyperinsulinemia is a factor in dementia. You're more likely to be getting Alzheimer's. We'll come on to Alzheimer's and the various things that cause and uh, are factors in getting Alzheimer's at a later stage but it is, again, a lifestyle disease. <clears throat> it is a factor in irritable bowel syndrome. It is a factor in inflammation in general, in arthritis, for example. It generates histamines, so you're more likely to have allergies. One of the major things that hyperinsulinemia does is to depress the immune system. And this is one factor in allowing cancers to flourish because when we come on to the cancer segment, you'll see that the immune system is really our major defense against getting cancers. Hyperinsulinemia, of course, is a factor in diabetes and in obesity. 
high insulin levels depress bone building. So it's a factor in osteoporosis. And finally, hyperinsulinemia upsets all kinds of hormones to do with cardiovascular disease, like thromboxane, for example. You have high insulin levels, you're going to have abnormal blood clotting, you're going to have higher blood pressure, you're going to be laying down extra plaque in the arteries, and above all, you're going to be encouraging the liver to overproduce cholesterol. This is one of the major ways in which, in today's world, human beings have high cholesterol levels. When we look back at the San Bushman and we talked about how they ate a lot of cholesterol but had low cholesterol levels, hey, that's mainly, not entirely, but mainly because they weren't eating a high glycemic diet. Their bodies wasn't, weren't making the cholesterol when, when it wasn't supposed to be doing so. So the high glycemic diet is a major disaster in the Western diet and we'll come on to how it happened and what we can do about it in a later segment. Everything Jeff Bond says in these videos and a whole lot more is to be found in his book Deadly Harvest. Check it out at www.deadlyharvest.com